Hello and welcome my friends and viewers to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, all while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their history within the game, how they're utilized in the modern edition, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week, we're going to be exploring hellhounds, fiendish dogs that hunt and consume the souls of the damned for both devils and demons, and serve as spicy companions for the more risk-prone adventuring party. Getting right into it, hellhounds are fiends that appear as infernal dogs with coal black, ash gray, or blood red fur, their eyes and bodies glowing with the hellish fires of the lower plains inside of them. Size-wise, they can range from as small as a chihuahua for the pups, or matching full-grown wolves in size and strength, with hellhounds from the ninth circle of Hell of Nessus being the size of draft horses. They often stank of sulfur, could understand but not speak the language of Infernal, and were notorious for their vice grip bite, rending claws, and the ability to spew a cone of fiery breath. While hellhounds have a reputation for hunting down the souls of the dead at the behest of fiends, in all actuality, they'll track down and feed on any creature that seems particularly edible and is unfortunate enough to cross its path. The flesh they consume is said to stoke the fires of hell itself, which cosmologically and biologically implies that the hound's stomach can function as a portal to hell, and opens up a great deal of implications that I as a dungeon master would prefer not to deal with. Despite the name, hellhounds were seen in the company and service of not just devils and demons, but azers, fire giants, fire giant goliaths, fire ganasi, as well as orcs and goblins. As an extra planar entity, upon being slain from outside their home plane, a hellhound would explode and leave small tufts of scorched fur as it was sent back to its home dimension. Meaning that dungeon masters can have the same hound return over and over in pursuit of its quarry, no matter how often it was taken down. Another fact that most DMs should remember is that hellhounds are both lawful evil creatures and have a higher intelligence than the average animal. This means that hellhounds can be trained to follow orders and hunt down specific objects or people, but their primary purpose is to serve as deadly killers for their masters, even going so far as to abandon or even turn on them if not allowed to sate their bloodlust. Hellhounds were also notorious for stealing small baubles and objects from their prey to use as toys, which didn't often last long due to most objects being quickly burned to ash. For Dungeon Masters, this could mean that a powerful magic item that can't be destroyed by common fire can be placed within a hellhound's den, the creature using it as a plaything that it had stolen from an adventurer that it had just killed. In terms of their history, the name Hellhound in and of itself is, again, misleading, as Hellhounds were originally created by the ancient primordials over a hundred billion years ago, which is why a lot of them could be natively found on the elemental plane of fire. In the time since then, they have traversed through all manner of portals located on the plane of fire, having ended up mostly on the lower plains of Asheron, the Abyss, and the Nine Hells of Bator. Those who find their way onto the material plane end up either causing massive forest fires with their mere presence, or moving into hot, dry areas like deserts, magma caverns, and volcanic valleys. Since then, the most notorious hellhounds to ever exist include the twin hounds Narthur and Zeragor under the fire giant Duke Salto, and the Nessian warhounds bred by the Lord of the Nine Hells, Asmodeus himself. Beyond that, the strongest and most fiery of the hellhounds were actually bred by the archdevil Mephistopheles, ironically within the cold hell realms of Cania. With all that out of the way, when using hellhounds at the table, it's important to remember that they have 60 feet of dark vision and an immunity to fire, which is really good for those fireball spamming spellcasters. Its 50 foot of movement speed makes it great for pursuit and for closing the distance between itself and party members, and its fire breath covers a 15 foot cone which can barbecue an entire party if they're not careful about positioning. Their keen senses can allow them to sniff right through invisibility and hiding tactics, and combine that with their intelligence and pack tactics, which gives them advantage on attacks via flanking, a pack of hellhounds can be smart enough to make the party think that they're well hidden before attacking all at once to distract the frontliners, while two other pack members can sneak up, grab the cleric with a grappling bite, and drag him off into the woods. And this is if they don't have some kind of mastermind or leader behind them. A fire giant can make great use of hellhounds as guard dogs to protect their forge, and azers, orcs, goliaths, and goblins can set them on parties as bloodhounds or even steeds to ride into battle. Thematically, a hellhound would also be a great companion to give your wildfire druid as a wildfire spirit, horizon walker rangers as extra planar companions, shadow sorcerers as their hounds of ill omen, and familiars for fiend warlocks and wizards of the conjuration or evocation schools. Going a step further, imagine a hellhound serving as the herald and faithful companion to a powerful, fiery death knight, serving as the primary villain for your campaign. Speaking of cool villain concepts, here are a couple of adventure and quest ideas that you can throw at the party involving hellhounds. For instance, the party can come across a sad azer who claims that he has lost his dog and offers the party a reward in exchange for finding his pet. But upon further investigation, the party discovers that the aforementioned dog is actually a hellhound, and it is not keen on being caught by a band of adventurers that it doesn't know. 
On the flip side, a party can discover a man being wolfed down by a hellhound. If they choose to intervene and kill the beast, the man can choose to reveal to them the reason for the hunt, that being that he made a deal with the devil and the hound has been sent to collect as he tried to flee. If you make this an NPC that's important for the party's goal or for the party to meet, they'll be doubly motivated to help him be freed of his contractual obligation. And lastly, a hellhound pack has been making a lot of trouble for a local village, burning down crop fields and gobbling up all the sheep and herd animals. When the party is called to deal with the problem and they track the pack down to their den, they can discover that the pack is actually led by a hellhound canamorph, which is a hound that can transform into a humanoid shape while retaining all the qualities of their canine form. That catamorph was created by a fiend of some sort, and the pack that it rules over in truth is actually looking for something in the local area. This could be a magic item, a sacred ritual area, or a person, and then the party would have to decide exactly how they want to approach it. In terms of magic items and components that could be made from and harvested respectively from the hellhound, here are a couple of ideas that I've had and used in my games. The tanned hide of a hellhound, which is notoriously hard to collect given the fact that hellhounds burst into flames upon death, can be made into vellum for a scroll of protection from fiends or hide armor for fire resistance, like a black fur-lined cloak made out of crackled hellhound skin. Likewise, hellhound bone can be carved and enchanted into a ring of fire resistance or an elemental essence shard for the plane of fire. The remaining furs of a slain hellhound can be used as components for potions of fire breath and fire resistance, and if you really want to have some fun, rings of fire elemental command and the brazier of commanding fire elementals can both unleash fire elementals that are in the shape of hellhounds, giving your party members a couple of fiery canine companions. In terms of items that are not made directly from hellhounds but instead use their aesthetic and iconography, a staff of fire can be carved in the visage of a leaping hellhound unleashing a gout of flame, and a figuring of wondrous power, especially that of the onyx dog variant, could be carved in the shape of a hellhound as well. And finally, for our homebrew magic item this evening, we have the Cloak of the Nessian Warhound, a special item made from the legendary canines that Asmodeus himself breeds. This is a cloak that requires a tumen and functions as a plus one cloak of protection and a cloak of fire resistance at the same time. Additionally, the wearer also has advantage on all perception checks having to do with hearing and smell, being able to call upon the hellhound's keen senses. And lastly, the cloak has five charges that the wearer can use to cast the following spells by spending the appropriate number of charges to do so, that being Dragon's Breath, Fire Shield, and Investiture of Flame. Upon the charges being reduced to zero, the item loses its plus one armor class bonus and its fire resistance ability, and they don't come back until you regain 1d4 plus one charges at the end of a long rest. I've included the item stat block in the description below, and with that, that's our coverage of the hell out, everybody. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and press the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. And also let me know in the comments how you guys have encountered hellhounds, if you actually ended up taming one, or how you guys have fought them in combat. And also let me know what kind of things you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.